Hi, this is Mrs. Labarbera. This is Physics Chapter Eleven, Wave Behavior Video Two. Today's topic、uh, is wavefronts, reflection, refraction, and diffraction. The objectives are know the definition of wavefronts, reflection, refraction, and diffraction. Understand the way in which waves reflect from boundaries. Understand the means by which waves change direction due to refraction. Be able to explain the reason for which waves bend due to refraction, and be able to explain the reason for which waves bend due to diffraction. Determine situations in which more or less diffraction will occur due to relative differences in the size of an opening and wavelength. Wave front and ray. So what's a wave front? So as you see a water drop, it forms this concentric circle. So each circle is a wave front. That means all the points on this circle will have the same phase. That means they really vibrate in sync. They either go all go up in the same displacement or all go down in the same displacement. So the wave rays, wave rays, uh, uh, is. Is the one drawing perpendicular to the wave fronts. Here is another example of a wave front. So wave traveling this way. So the direction, the arrow indicates the direction of the wave's travel, and this ray is drawn perpendicular to the wave fronts. That indicate the direction of waves travel. So now we know this line is also called wave fronts. If it's not circular, it's just a ray going straight. And the line that's perpendicular to all the wave fronts is called a ray. Now let's take a look at a reflection according to the law of reflection. So when waves comes to a boundary, we already learned from last lesson that it、uh, is that it's going to reflect. So here is an animation of water. Water waves come to this boundary and reflect it to this way. So here is the diagrams of how wave ref. Uh, reflect. Actually, this is kind of like upside down of this situation. So wave comes to the boundary. This right line is parallel to each other. This is called wave fronts, and this line perpendicular to it, to the wave fronts is called a ray. So wave travels this way, comes to the boundary, is going to be reflect that、uh, that way in the blue blue way, right? As the water wave approaches the boundary, this wave bounces off the water and heads in a different direction. So diagram shows reflected wave fronts and reflected ray. Regardless of the angle at which the waves approach the barrier, one general law of reflection holds true. So what's the law of reflection? It says the waves will always reflect in such a way that angle at which they approach the Barrier equals to the angle at which they reflect off the barrier. As you can see, it's kind of like symmetrical. If you have an imagine, imaginary line right in the middle, these two angles are symmetrical. They are the same. This this law is called the law of reflection. We're going to talk about law of reflection next chapter in detail. What's refraction? So refraction is a bending of the path of the wave. Let's see what happens to the bending. As you can see, the wave, the rays have changed directions. The rays has bent. So the waves comes to the boundary. The wave first encounter the boundary will change its speed. If you're coming from less dense to denser, the wave is going to travel slower. As part of the wave travels slower, the other part is still have the same speed, and that's the reason why the wave bends. So as a wave, <coughs> excuse me, approaches across the boundary, its speed changes. Since the wave approaches approaches the boundary at an angle, the wave front changes its speed at a different time. The part that reaches reaches the boundary first slows down, while the rest of the fronts move ahead at a faster pace. The result is the direction of the wave front is changed. At the boundary, so the fundamental feature of the wave's motion that leads to this change is the direction. In the direction, is change in speed at a different time. So one part of the wave changes speed first, then the other part, and that is why the 
diffraction has changed. So another word for diffraction is bending. The bending of the wave is the result of changing speed. Because the speed changed, we know frequency doesn't change, right? So the wavelength has to change. In this case, the speed slows down, the wavelength actually decreased. Let's take a look at this example. Refraction of the wave is caused by a changing wave's speed. That's what we talked about last slide. Another example, what happens to the speed and frequency of the light ray when it passes from air into water? So which, which one is denser? Water is denser, so speed is going to decrease. But we know frequency does not change, so speed decreases and frequency remains the same. The answer is 2. The next boundary behavior is diffraction. So diffraction involves the changing direction of the wave as it passes through an opening or around a barrier in their path. Only the direction changes. Wavelength, speed, or frequency does not change because it's still the same medium. Okay, so in order for diffraction to occur, you'll have to have a slit or a barrier, some kind of barrier. So how does the direction change? As you can see, the wave is traveling to the right here on the left side of the boundary. On the right side of the boundary, it travels to in kind of like a semi-circular motion. So the direction have changed. And that's called a diffraction. Diffraction depends on the size of the slit or opening and the wavelength, the relative size. So you have two animations here. The, the one on the left has a very small opening, so there is more diffraction. The wave bends more. The one in the middle over here, the opening is much bigger relative to the size of wavelength. By the way, the wavelength is from the 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 distance between the lines that's the wavelength so the size of the opening is much bigger than the wavelength so the diffraction is kind of small so over here you can see the diagram as the opening get bigger and bigger there is less and less of a diffraction so the amount of diffraction is determined by the, how the wavelength and the size of the opening compare if they are comparable that means if they are about the same that's when you'll have most diffraction occurs. So the wave bends more. It travels the directions is all around. It's become a semicircle. But when the opening is much bigger in the, in the case in the middle, the diffraction is less. You should know wavelength, frequency, and speed do not change. Wavelength do not change means the distance between the lines after diffraction is the same as the diff distance before diffraction. Let's take a look at this example. The diagram shows a wave phenomena. The pattern of the wave shown behind the barrier is a result of this is a wave going over a barrier. The wave bends. That, this phenomena is called a diffraction. Now, a parallel wave front, an incident on an opening in a barrier, rank the diagram from the greatest diffraction to the least diffraction. So assume all the diagram in the same scale. So we have learned the diff diffraction depend, depends on the relative size of the wavelength and opening. So when they are comparable, you have most diffraction. So in this case, D, the distance between waves, crest and crest, is about the same as the size of opening. So D must have the biggest diffraction. And this would have least diffraction. C would have least diffraction because the wavelength is much smaller than the size of the opening. Over here, the wavelength is a little bit smaller than the size of the opening. Over here, I think wavelength is a little bit more or less compare A and B, in my opinion. So I did A, B, A, and C. Another example. So the diagram below shows a series of straight wave fronts produced in a shallow tank of water approaching a small opening in a barrier. Which diagram represent uh, the appearance of the wave fronts 
after passing through the opening in the barrier, A, B, or C. So we know this is diffraction. So in C, there is no diffraction. So we know C is wrong. But now consider A and B. What, uh, what is the difference between A and B is the wavelength. So B has smaller wavelength. A has bigger wavelength. So we know diffraction, nothing changes except the direction of travel. So before, the wavelength is 1.4. Now after diffraction, the wavelength has to be 1.4. So the answer has to be A. OK, summary. So we have learned three different, uh, different uh, um, phenomena today. Reflection, which is uh, bending off, right? And refraction is bend, uh, I mean, reflection is bouncing off. Refraction is the bending, change of speed, result of changing direction. Diffraction also is change of direction, but it's around an obstacle or opening. Refraction is changing medium. So diffraction is not changing medium, it's bending around an obstacle or opening. And reflection, obviously, is not changing medium because you can't write back. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.